this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He never failed me yet. Oh, can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. We come, we've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord, trusting in His holy word. Never fail me yet. Whoa, can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. Let's sing it, everybody. We've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. Trusting in his holy word, he never failed me yet. Oh, can't turn around, we've come this far by faith, we've come this far. Far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting, trusting in his holy word. He's never failed. He's never failed me yet. Singing, oh, can't turn around. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We have come this far by faith. Right now, we will ask each and every one of you to sit in prayer as our pastor come with the word of God. Let's say amen. amen. Huh? Huh? Today is the anniversary of Good, good, good. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We're so happy to be in the house of prayer. And for those of you that missed Sunday, we have a new baby in the house. Brother got the Holy Ghost. Stand up, son. Hallelujah. Let's welcome him, welcome him, welcome him. Hallelujah. Welcome to the family of God. God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for Bible class. If you're sitting beyond Sister Dana, raise your hand, Sister Dana. Move closer to the front, please, and give the Lord a hand. Praise while you're coming. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I hope and pray that we are online. Everything is, is straight upstairs. God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For those of you that are tuned in, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. We hope and pray that something is said to strengthen your heart and to encourage you in your walk with the Lord. We don't take it lightly that you take time out of your busy schedule to worship with us here in midweek service at Apostolic Restoration Ministry. God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only do we hope and pray that something will be said to encourage your heart in your walk with the Lord, but we pray and hope and we thank God for those of you that the Lord has allowed your heart and encouraged your hearts to send your financial contributions here to Apostolic Restoration Ministry. We assure you, my brothers and sisters, that you're planting your seed in good soil. And may the blessing of the Lord that maketh the rich and add no sorrow to it be upon you and yours in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for our virtual audience on tonight. Hallelujah. 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 We are honored of the Lord that those of you that celebrated birthdays and anniversaries and all of that good stuff in the month of September, those of you that travel out of town and have made it back, God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe this is Mother Titwell's spiritual birthday in this month. How many years? Huh? 49. 49 years. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. 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 Generally, before we start a Bible class, we will allow five. If you're sitting beyond, raise your hand again, Sister Dana. If you're sitting beyond, Sister Dana, please move a little bit closer to the front. Hallelujah. <clears throat> 
generally before we start a class, we allow five to seven minutes for any questions that you may have before you, we proceed. If you're tuned in, you can text your questions expeditiously to area code 601-951-8190. Nine five one eight one nine zero. Thank you, Brother Billy, and uh, my wife will get my attention and read your question to me. And I will thank the Lord for September sixth was our anniversary. I'm gonna see if my wife know how many years it was. How many years was it? <laughs> Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. So, if you have any questions. Please raise your hand and I will do my best to give you a biblical answer. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Yes, sir. Okay, so an individual is unconscious, they are bedridden. Mm -hmm. the, Bible, the Bible declares this, that the king of all the earth will do right. We had a young man about 10 years ago, I administered to the family. He had got shot about 10 times. And uh, for some reason, they had to leave the wound open and it was band-aid, bandaged over. And the same thing as having a trachea in your throat. He could not get his hip wet where he had. They had done the surgery on the bone in his leg to put it back together or whatever, but he could not get wet. So it would have been, it would have been ill advised on us to go beyond the doctor and to baptize him getting his leg wet. So the Bible tells us in situations like that, the king of all the earth will do right. Some things we have to simply leave in the hand of God. We have to leave them in the hand of God because say for instance, we went beyond what the doctor said and the individual, not from the baptism, but for something else, contracted what they call staph infection because the band-aids were not changed out properly the first thing somebody will say, well, he got wet. Y'all need to sue that church because they disobeyed the doctor's order. So some things, uh, Brother Grant, we have to leave up to God. Amen? Amen? Let us give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <clears throat> first of all, I want to thank God. I want to thank God. I want to thank God for the saints of God that accomplished us to Natchez, Mississippi, and brothers and sisters, I want to report to you that we saw a move of God like we haven't in a long time. Anybody, anybody in this house, hallelujah. I said when I conducted the service on Saturday that great miracles, great signs, and great wonders were going to follow that service. Anybody remember the mother that was in the wheelchair on Friday night that was rolled up to the altar? Amen. She was rolled up to the altar in a wheelchair Come Saturday service, I don't know where she come from, but Bishop Bill was about to get up and ask somebody to walk. But this woman that was in the wheelchair on Friday night, she got out of her seat, she walked around the sanctuary, she was just praising God, and it set the church on fire. And Bishop Bill said this, he said, now I was about to ask somebody to walk. I was about to ask some of y'all people with two good legs to walk. But God used a woman, hallelujah, that was in a wheelchair. And I don't, know the I don't know her condition. All I know is what I saw. She took a lap around that church, praise the Lord. Somebody ought to give God praise. <laughs> on Monday morning, on Monday morning, I got a text from Bishop Bill. He said, Pastor, you said that great miracles, great signs, and great wonders were going to follow this service. Bishop Bill said that on Sunday morning, the mother, not this woman, but another, another mother, was 78 years old. Bishop Bill said she had a stroke on last year, which, which challenged her movability. He said that on Sunday morning, this mother, 78 years old, 
got up and started walking and she outwalked the young people. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God a standing ovation in this place. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. 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 Our God is an awesome God. Anybody agree with me? Anybody agree with me that our God is an awesome God? So I want to thank you and to encourage you. Yes. Okay, hold on just a minute. He bring you the mic. I want to thank you and to encourage your heart to please. We've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. Trusting in his holy word. He never failed me. We got to learn to trust God no matter what. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes. Okay, the question is, if someone commits suicide, can they still make it to heaven? It depends on the reason. It depends on the reason. There were saints that were being persecuted by the assassin Paul. When they knew that Paul was coming to make them to deny the name of Jesus, they would go and jump off the edge of a cliff rather than uh, deny the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said, I was exceedingly mad against them. And what did he mean? He would persecute them until they, he would torture them until they denied the name of Jesus and then he would cut their throat. Some not accepting deliverance, they went and jumped off of a cliff or hung themselves rather than deny the name of Jesus. So it depends on the motive. God judges everything by motive. Amen? Amen. All right. Everybody say, this is our time. Everybody didn't say that. This is our time. Our time. This is... Our time. Our time. Don't miss out, people. Don't miss out. Now, I want y'all to write these three things down for this series of lessons. I want you to write these three things down. You ready? Number one. Procrastination is the thief of time. Procrastination is the thief of time. Procrastination is the thief of time. Y'all remember when God told Israel to go and to possess the promised land? They procrastinated with a mouthful of excuses. Ooh. We look like grasshoppers in the eyes of those big old giants. It's the thief of time. They not only wasted time, but they lost time. When they could have been enjoying 40 years of being blessed, they suffered 40 years of wonder. Procrastination is the thief of time, number one. Number two. Number two. Complacency. Is the seed of self destruction. Complacency is the seed of self destruction. I got that. Complacency is the seed of self destruction. And number three, doubt. Or beliefs not substantiated by the Bible is the seed of being eternally lost. Let me say that again. Doubt or beliefs not substantiated by the Bible is the seed of being eternally lost. Number one, procrastination is the thief of time. Number two, complacency is the seed of self-destruction. Number three, doubt or beliefs not substantiated by the Bible is the seed of being eternally lost. Got it? Let me say it again. Number three, doubt or beliefs not substantiated by the Bible is the seed of being eternally lost. Got it? 
All right? Number one, procrastination is the thief of time. Number two, complacency is the seed of self-destruction. Number three, doubt or disbelief, or I'm sorry, doubt or beliefs not substantiated by the Bible is the seed of being eternally lost. Got it? All right. Scripture number one, let's go expeditiously to, expeditiously to Psalms chapter 57. Verses 7 through 11. Psalm 57, 7 through 11. If you have it, say amen. Seven. Psalms 57. Psalms chapter 57, verses 7 through 11. You got it? 7 through 11. Psalm 57. Read. <laughs> Psalm 57, verses 7 through 11. Uh -huh. My heart is fixed, O God. Listen, my heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. Now he's saying it twice to make sure that you get the message. My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. And first thing we must understand in serving God is that only God can fix the heart. <laughs> only God can fix the heart. The Bible tells us that the heart is what? Deceitful and desperately wicked above all things. Who can know it but God? Listen. Only God can fix the heart. Only God. My heart, my heart is fixed, oh God. My heart is fixed. If God has fixed your heart, you ought to give him a hand praise. Glory, glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, when God fixed your heart, there's a maintenance program that you have to stay on to keep it fixed. Hallelujah. Sister Clay, we, 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 are, we in a Christomatic world, they believe my heart don't have to be fixed for one time and I'm good for life. You can have a healthy heart today and it started giving you trouble tomorrow. My heart is fixed, oh God, my heart is fixed. Read. I will sing and give praise. Ah, I will sing and give praise because praise is comely for who? The upright. Somebody give God a praise in this house. Glory, glory. Read. Awake up, my glory. Awake. Huh? Wait, do what? Awake up, my glory. Oh, wake up, my glory. Do what? Wake up. The Bible tells you to declare the goodness of the Lord in the congregation of the righteous. How do you declare the goodness of the Lord in the congregation of the righteous? You open your mouth and tell somebody what God has done for you. God don't want you to be silent about his blessing. Somebody say hallelujah. God want to be extolled from the words and by the words of your mouth. Awake up, oh my glory. Why are you saying that, brother preacher? Because God done worked some great miracles, some great signs, some great wonders in this house. And y'all know God done did it, but some of y'all ain't told nobody. Oh, that ain't me. I don't like to testify in front of people. Huh? I, I'm just not an outspoken person like that. I want to ask a crazy question. When you went in that upper room, when you went in that operating room, they put you under. And whether you know it or not, when they got ready to operate on you, they took all your clothes off in front of strangers. Amen. You didn't know that? Amen. I'm, I'm just not that. Lord, help us, Jesus. And when you die, strangers going to dress you. Let me move on. Please, daughter Reed. Awake up, my Awake glory. Awake up, my glory. Awake, psaltery and heart. Wait a minute. Awake up, oh my glory. Let the glory of the Lord rise amongst us. How does the glory of the Lord rise amongst us? He said, I will sing hallelujah. Whoo! When the praise team sing, don't y'all sing song? Everybody can join in in. So some folks, don't, they don't want their glory to wake up. They don't wake up until they get home for Sunday night football. Somebody said glory in this house. Yes. 
Good in the Orleans Saints won 40 to 0. Wonderful. God done did more than that. Get home, spilling your Coca Cola over a touchdown. But you come to church, and God done work great miracles, great signs, and great wonders on your behalf, and you ain't told nobody. And all God asks, the sacrifice of praise in the congregation. What's wrong with open your mouth? Tell me about, don't God don't care about you being sly, not sly, but shy. Read, please read. Awake up, my glory. Uh -huh. Awake, sultry and harp. Yes. I myself will awake early. Wait. Will wake when? Early. What does the Bible say about a virtuous woman? When do she get up? She get up early. What is God expecting of Zion? The church is a virtuous woman. What are you talking about, brother preacher? A virtuous woman who can find. Ah. Who can find a church that is predicated on giving God the, or the honor, the glory, and the praise that he deserves not one day, but every day? We cannot come become complacent in what God is doing just because our name is not on every miracle. We got to celebrate God every time we come in this house. Some of y'all missed it. Some of y'all missed it. Long time official with Jackson Public Schools called today with a doctor's report. Don't y'all know somebody talking about the goodness of God? When God do something, you got to tell it abroad. Oh, glory! How y'all? The Lord cast a legion of demons out of one man. Don't you know when God deliver, when God really delivers you, you want to tell somebody? somebody. The man said to him, he said, Jesus, can I go with y'all? Jesus said, no, son. Go back home to your friends and your family and tell them what great things the Lord has done. Somebody talking about the goodness of the Lord. Sister Falcon heard about great miracles, great signs, and great wonder. She called Dick and Spencer. That's what they called that guy when you was walking out the office. She's a pastor. I went to the doctor the other day, and he said, my left knee is gone out. He says, bone grinding against bone. He said, the doctors want to do surgery. She said, I don't want them cutting on me. She said, I want God to heal me. Amen. And she went to the scripture, what she done read in the scripture. She said, the Lord heal impotent folk and people that weren't able to walk. He read. She said, I want God to do that for me. She said, well, Pastor, I can't come Sunday because I'm the greeter at my church. I can't come Sunday. But this woman, after being at work from 9 to 5, got off work after 5. Guess where she came? She came to Apostolic Restoration Ministry. Somebody said, hallelujah. The women of God surrounded her, anointed her with oil. We prayed the prayer of faith. I don't know when she's going back to the doctor, but I know, I know what I'm looking for that doctor to say. Somebody give God glory in this house. Hey, if you don't talk about the goodness of God, somebody else will. If you don't give God the glory that do his name, what you say, Elder Darrell? You said if you don't do it, somebody else will. Somebody give God a praise in his house. Glory, read, read, read. I got to move on. I will praise thee, O Lord, yes. among the people. Yes. I will sing unto thee among the nations. I will sing unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens. And huh. thy wait, wait, wait. Thy mercy is great unto the heavens. Listen, folk. For the mercy of God to be great unto the heavens, that let you know it's starting in your ranks. And reaches all the way to heaven. Glory. Somebody will thank God for mercy. That mercy is great unto the heavens. I told y'all this about two years ago. For years, Bishop Gates would not get on a plane. He would drive everywhere he went. So finally, he had come to the point, man, I can't be doing all this driving. And he got on an airplane. Hmm. And he was shaking his boots, so to speak. And he said, an elderly white lady was sitting next to him. She said, she said sir, she said, there's too much destiny, too much ministry in us for God to let this plane fall. 
Hallelujah. His mercy reaches all the way to the heavens. So when you got to get on the 747 to fly to Honolulu, Hawaii, stay in the Hilton that's 15, 16, 17 stories high, don't worry about the plane falling in the sea. If you own it, go to sleep. If it do fall, the Lord gonna still be merciful. <laughs> hey, glory. Instead of hollering, said, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. On the way down, give God praise. He might just fix that engine up and send it back up in the high blue yonder. Folks, we got to learn to give God praise no matter what the situation look like. And if you can't give God praise in the house of God, you can't give God praise nowhere. Kabasha, glory to God. I said this the other day, and y'all, I don't, I, 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 I'm not a very uh, kind person when it comes to things like this. I said this the other day. I'm jealous of this. I'm jealous of this. I said to Sister Teacher the other day, every time, I don't care what's going on in church, she's standing up, praising the Lord, waving her hands. Don't stop, because your children are watching you just like y'all that come to church and sit on your butt, you don't move until you get ready. May the Lord watch between me and thee and you first throw in the gifts to your car. This is what I'm jealous of. And I'm talking about the UPC. The Bible said praise is comely for the upright. The Bible said let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Every UP service that I have been to come uh, devotion service from six to five to all the way up to young teenagers, all everybody in church stand up. They begin to run, they begin to jump, but they ain't got no Holy Ghost. You may not have it either. But they're doing what the Bible said, do let everything that had breath praise the Lord. You know why they experience more miracles than we do? Because they set the atmosphere. You know why children get the Holy Ghost at an early age because they set the atmosphere because we set praise in them while train them up in the way that they should go when hey hallelujah when children see mama and daddy set down and never move they set down and never move but it's going to be a time that they need God on a college campus and their praise is going to be the thing that's going to deliver them if you ain't put it in them now you can forget it It's going to be times, there's going to be times. They ain't going to have time. They be pinned down in a classroom with an active shooter on camera. They ain't going to have to know how to call on God for themselves. But you ain't put that in them. Keep on praising the Lord the way you do. The Bible said provoke one another to good works. Folk ought to be able to walk off that street, come through that door, speaking in tongues the way that brother did Sunday morning. But we don't set the atmosphere because we got too many people sitting down and they are complacent. Read, read, read. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens. Yes. And thy truth unto the clouds. Yes. Be thou exalted, O God. Be thou exalted, O God. If the people of God don't exalt our God, who gonna exalt him? I got the answer for you. Monday night football, Sunday night football, midweek football, you'll see 61 to 110,000 in the same arena. They about to have a game, one team called Whiteout. I guarantee you, all 120,000 participants for that team, all them fans gonna have on some white. Oh, they're gonna be on one accord. Hmm. I long for the day, Sister Martin, that we can come in the house of God and everybody on one accord. Everybody got a praise for the Lord. Everybody got a hallelujah. Everybody got a thank you, Jesus. Everybody got a time out time and time out time. God know the difference between your voices. If you don't believe it, you ought to watch National Geographic in the Arctic. 27 degrees below zero, Daddy Penguin then sit on an egg for three months and it's then hatched. The females show back up after three months and the daddy go back to fishing. He get his belly full of fish after about three weeks 
he come back to 175,000 penguins and all of them dressed in black tuxedos and white shirts. Every last one of them look alike. And you wonder, how do the right daddy get to the right mama? You know what they found out? They recorded them. Each female know what her man sound like. It's 120,000 penguins all quack, 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 quack. And all, to me, it all sounds the same. But Sister Sarah Lou Penguin, oh, that's Johnny. Quack, quack, quack. Here I am, baby, come and get me. The Lord know your hallelujah from my hallelujah. The Lord know your thank you, Jesus, from my thank you, Jesus. Somebody said glory in this house. God can't do what he want to do because we tie God's hand in his own house. Read. Be thou exalted, O God, uh -huh. above the heavens. Yes. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Wait a minute. Let that glory be what? Let thy glory be above all the earth. Woo! Let the praises of the Lord rise amongst us. Let thy glory be above all the earth. You ought to, you ought to, you ought to do like Paul and Silas. What I'm saying and what I'm praying to heaven got the news. Yes. You'll not stop singing. You'll not stop praising till heaven gets the news. Hmm. Go to Ephesians. Chapter 5. Verses 14 through 17. Ephesians chapter 5. 14 through 17. <clears throat> Ephesians 5, 14 through 17. Yes. Wherefore he saith. Wherefore he saith. Awake thou that sleepest. Wait a minute. Did he just say in Psalm 57? My wake thou my glory. Awake thou my glory. When? Early. Don't put off a praise for God until tomorrow when you can give it to him today. Tomorrow ain't promised to you. If you die with a praise in you, that's a glory God never got. Because the Bible said the dead don't know nothing. That's why I tell you to praise the Lord in the congregation of the upright. Tell of the goodness of the Lord while you are in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Folk want to test the lie. Because when you can't say nothing, you better make sure that the people speaking for you are telling the truth. Did y'all hear what I told them Sunday? I mean Saturday during the service? As we have funerals here, people get up, they have two minute expressions. They want to go on to three and five minutes. I said, no, baby. Well, I'm feeling the spirit. Good. Go feel it in your seat. Because we're going to respect the house of God and we're going to respect time. You didn't tell me you love me while I was living? I done told y'all this, I done told y'all this, I done told y'all this. If the Lord help me and I die and y'all come to my funeral, y'all get folk getting up there testifying about they love me and they ain't come to see me in 17 years, I'm going to get up out of the and say boo and scare all y'all out of him. <laughs> don't be lying on me. Don't lie to me. Don't lie for me. And don't lie on me. Don't tell me you love me. Tell me you love me right now. Thank you, Jesus. Read, read, please read. Wherefore he saith, mm. Awake thou that sleepest. Awake thou that sleepest. And arise from the dead. And arise from the dead. Wait! Arise from the what? From the dead. Don't you know, don't you know, don't you know? If the saints that have been born of the water and the spirit of God, if you don't give God the praise that he rightfully deserves, God will send a stranger to give him the praise. He'll send an and not, oh, glory. What you don't do, somebody else will. That woman walked up in here. I didn't go home, Pastor Port. I just, I didn't wait till Sunday. I told you I wasn't going to make it Sunday, but she came today. Amen. Yes. Read. Wherefore he saith, mm. Awake thou that sleepest, ah. and arise from the dead. Yes. And Christ shall give thee light. Wait a minute. He going to do what? And Christ shall give thee light. Wait a minute. Awake that. Say that again. Wherefore he saith. Wherefore who he saith. Awake thou that sleepest. Awake thou that sleepest. And arise from the dead. And arise from the dead. Don't y'all know. Don't you know. Don't you know. Woe to them that be at ease in Zion. That are asleep. That are complacent in Zion. 
Everything dead, I don't know, but that's what they told me. Everything dead needs to be buried. Because you stay dead long enough, you're going to stink. Whoo! You're going to stink. If you don't believe it, i tell you what you do. You ain't got to be dead to stink. You can be alive, but with the wrong sin on. You don't believe it? On your way to work tomorrow, let your window down and pray that the Lord bless you to pass by a section of the road where somebody to run over a polecat. He's going to leave his fragrance in the air. If you want to know how a stinky situation smells to God, get your sandwich, get your plate, and go park on the side of the road where all that skunk perfume can come in your hair and, I mean, come in your car and you can smell it while you're eating. It will spoil your appetite. Ah. Praise has come up before God as a sweet smell and savior. And you know what? Y'all ain't gonna like this. But God get more glory out of children praising God than adults with a wicked heart. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, God has ordained perfect praise. Because y'all know what children will do? They will get to fighting today and be back best friends tomorrow. Oh, somebody said, stop the press, stop the press, stop the press. Somebody said, stop the press. God has ordained perfect praise out of the mouth of children. Because they can be out there playing football, running to each other, knock the quarterback over. They go to the same school. He said, man, you knocked me on my butt, dog. Whew. And they'll be friends. But you let somebody step on your so corn in church. Y'all will come to church for a month of Sundays. You'll sit on that side of the road and they'll sit on this side of the church and you will purposely avoid not speaking to them. But you'll say, praise the Lord. You'll speak in tongues and you'll go to bed night after night after night. I ain't gonna call them if they don't call me. I ain't got nothing in my heart against them, but I ain't got nothing to say to them. Ooh! That's why the Bible tells you, he that don't come into the kingdom of heaven as a little child won't ever enter therein. Because when you get to be adults, you get adult attitudes. And Sister Martin, adults can go to bed for a month of Sundays. Knowing that there's something between brother and brother, or sister and sister, it don't bother. They go to bed and sleep like a baby. Please read. And Christ shall give thee light. And Christ shall give thee light. Read. See then that ye walk circumspectly. Wait a minute. See then that you walk circumspectly. Not as fools. Wait a minute. Not as fools. But as wise. But as wise. Read. Redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. Wait. I'm gonna wait till. I'm gonna wait till. I, I'm gonna wait till I can deal with this emotionally. Wait a minute. Wait. 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 You cannot make decisions concerning God based on your emotional state of being. Because if you make decisions on the word of God based on your emotional beings, you gonna wait till you feel like it. You gonna wait till you feel like it. Whoo! You gonna wait till you feel like it. I'm mad at the past, but I don't want I ain't got nothing to say to him right now. Why? I'm upset. Your emotions are involved. Jesus couldn't make a decision based on his emotion. Jesus didn't feel like all that pain and suffering that he was going to go through. But you know what he said? Father, be your will. Let this cup pass from me. Nonetheless, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. You know how we go to bed? My will be done. We pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in me as it is in heaven. But we don't mean the prayer that we pray because we really don't believe the word of God. Because if we believe the word of God, we will say, thy will be done in spite of how I feel. That's why we cheat people out of great miracles, great signs, and great wonders. Read, read, read. Redeeming the time because mm. the days are evil. 
Uh -huh. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, uh. but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Ooh, say that again. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord but is. But understanding what the will of the Lord is. And the will of the Lord is when it comes to Zion that brethren dwell together. How? In unity. Ha, ah, yes. If someone... What you were just saying about somebody waiting until they're emotionally ready to deal with something. So mm -hmm. if an individual go to a person and they say, well, I'm not emotionally ready to deal with it now. Uh, uh, that person that goes to them, do they supposed to press them to get it? No. Just You've done your alone? part. You do your part. Okay. You do your part. And to take it further, that they might be saved. If they don't hear you, what did the Bible say do? Go get somebody you think they might listen to. It's not to spread gossip, but it's to bring resolution to a discord in the house of God. Because in the day of Pentecost, they were all with one accord in one place. The same thing God requires today. We all got to be in one accord in one place. It's more people in disaccord. Let me say this. It's more people in disaccord in the house of God on any given Sunday morning than there are people in one accord. That's why God narrowed it down. If I could just get two or three. I said, if I could just get two or three. God don't need a whole lot of folk. God need two or three people in this sanctuary every Sunday morning that will give him the praise, that do his name, that will worship him in spirit and in truth, that will come before God with great expectation. The question is asked from Genesis to Revelation, is there anything too hard for God? God will bypass all the naysayers. God will bypass all the non-praisers. He'll take two or three folk. Hey, hallelujah. Mm -mm. Read. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, huh. but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Yes. Hmm. Ah, somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And don't the Bible tell the pastor, teach them to observe all things? And after you teach them to observe all things, what would the Holy Ghost do? It will bring all things to their remembrance, whatsoever they have been taught. God ain't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is still in the business of raising the dead. I don't care if they've been dead four days or four months. God is still able to raise them. You say, well, he stinks by now. Of course he stinks. And his faith done, 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 Rick, Rick and Marvin done set in. And the flesh done begin to fall from the bone. But if God can speak to dry bones in a belly, he ought to have a shy glory. And cause flesh to appear that has long rotted into the dirt. Can these dry bones live? Yeah, glory. We put brakes on God in his own house. Lord, help us, Jesus. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. God has sent a few faithful people that are set in their mindset to drive hell out of the house of God every Sunday morning. And you ain't got to lay hands on everybody to do it. You just got to be responsible for your space. Shout out glory. You can be in a jail cell. Let somebody sing and let somebody pray. Whoo! And you ain't got to feel him to know that he's there. That woman in a wheelchair. Am I telling the truth? That woman got up Saturday. She was heavy set. And she was taking the steps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ay, hallelujah. Boy, the church couldn't do nothing but go up in a praise. Hallelujah. Somebody heard about it that wasn't even there. 79 years old. She said, well, Sister Mary can do it. I can do it too. Bishop Bill said that woman had walked, was walking, was going out, out, out walking everybody else before she recognized, oh, I'm walking without my thing. Somebody give God praise. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. Hey, what's on the rise again in the world? COVID what? COVID? It's a nimago with it. 
COVID-19. Somebody said, thank you, Lord. Somebody said, thank you, Lord. Thus saith the Holy Ghost. There is no place in Zion for spiritual COVID. Ain't no place for it. And the Bible says this. The spirit of God bloweth where it listed. What do you mean? You can't tell what direction it's coming from. And you can't tell what direction it's going when it leaves you. So the Bible says, so is everyone that is born of the spirit of God. I'm so glad I got a mind, I got a spirit to hear from God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all know what COVID-19 is, right? It's a virus that affects your ability to breathe. Lord, what do you mean? COVID has no place in the house of God. C-O-V-I-D. COVID. Everybody said COVID. COVID. This is what COVID is in the house of God. Capital C. Complacency. I want y'all to know what this word means. And some of y'all got phones. I know you're already looking it up on your, on your cell phones. Complacency. Showing smog or uncritical satisfaction with oneself or one's achievement. Showing smug or uncritical satisfaction for one's achievement. What do you mean? I'm satisfied where I am. I'm all right. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't go to nightclubs. Y'all know why I come out of this door? Every Sunday morning or every other Sunday morning at 929. Say, why, Pastor? Oh, I'm so glad y'all Ask Hallelujah. Because the Lord called me to be the watchman on the wall. You know, some folk got upset at me because of the way that I conduct the service on Saturday. When I told them we're going to respect God because we're going to respect time. I told Bishop Bill before I started serving, it was 12 or 5. I said, Bishop, if, if I'm in charge of this service, let me go because my former pastor, if he knew I was starting late, if he could, he would turn over in his grave. So let me get out of his office and go do what I got to do. And some folk were upset because it's not left for me to direct the service. It's up to the Holy Ghost. But the spirits are subject to the prophets. Because when God leads the service, it's time for me to go to the house. <laughs> when God leads the service, what you hanging around for in the house of God? Who wants a stranger in their house when they're gone? Y'all better learn this. If y'all got daughters and they turn 18 and you allow them to date at 18, and Johnny Boy come by on Saturday to watch an 8 o'clock movie and the movie go off at 10, it's time for Johnny Boy to go to the house. You don't go to sleep and leave him in your house with your daughter. All right, baby, mama going to bed. We got to put Johnny Boy Manage Tail out of there. Well, he's saved. Let him be saved at church. Y'all ain't going to like me. So we're going to respect order. We're going to respect time. Because when you respect order, you respect time. When you respect time, you respect honor. When you respect the house of God, God is an on-time God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And those of you, y'all saw the display of defiance, but I didn't get mad. I just, I just stood in my place and we moved on and God blessed. And didn't God move? <laughs> Complacency. This is spiritual COVID. Showing smug or uncritical satisfaction without oneself, about oneself or one's achieve, achievement. Ha! What you mean? I didn't get a chance to testify yesterday, but I'm going to sure do it today. The pastor said, read the scripture, sir. Read the scripture. No, I didn't get a chance to testify yesterday. Read the scripture, sir. The pastor had to go up there and put his Bible down for the brother to read the scripture. And he still wouldn't read. He just been his flip through the scripture. But the Holy Ghost finally took over and he read the scripture. Ah. COVID. C. 
Showing smug or uncritical satisfaction with oneself or one's achievement. Complacency is being satisfied where you are. And when you are satisfied where you are, there's no push to go to the next level. You got spiritual COVID. Mm. Oh, I'm spelling out COVID. Y'all, please don't miss this. Honorary, bad tempered, or combative. They ain't doing nothing but wasting time. If I'm not wasting time, you ain't doing nothing but rushing through the service. Where is the balance? If I hold too long, I'm wasting time. To get out too quick, I'm rushing the service. So I got I to gotta listen to God and forget what the people say. But you got to give the people what they want. Where you get that from? You ain't got to give the people what they want. You got to give the people what they need. Because there are too many pastors out right there right now giving the people what they want. They want a satisfaction, feel good message where there is no challenge to change. That ain't God, baby. Because everything from Genesis to Revelation, it involves change. And change involves your mind. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. My job ain't to make you feel good where you are. My job is to push you to the next level where you need to be. Lord, help me in this place. I ain't getting no help in this place. O is honorary. Honorary. Bad tempered or combative. What you mean? You're wasting too much time. Y'all know how y'all say when I preach from 11.30 to 1.15? I ain't, I ain't, I'm trying to do better. Amen. Ain't y'all going to pray for me? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying, Sister Beverly. I'm trying, I'm trying to get it all out. But I, 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 I realize that Rome wasn't built in the day and you can't tell her the goodness. If you talk to the goodness of the Lord every day, you'll be talking to the time you get up to the time you get to go to sleep. In the evening you sleep, you'll be talking to your sleep about the goodness of the Lord. Anybody can witness to that? Amen. Ain't nobody ever woke up saying, thank you, Jesus. Or woke up speaking in tongues, the spirit of God gives. Ain't nobody ever experienced that? Where y'all been? Lord have mercy. I tell you how to experience it if you haven't. Not only woke up this morning with your mind stayed on Jesus, go to bed with your mind stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind. Stayed on Jesus. Woke up this morning with my mind. Stay on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 If you want to wake up like that, go to bed or with your mind. Stayed on Jesus. Go to bed or with your mind. Stayed on Jesus. Go to bed or with your mind. Stay on Jesus. Y'all hear that note? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Y'all ain't gonna like me, but that's all right. Complacency, bad tempered or vindictive. Ooh, V, C O V, vindictive. What you mean, vindictive, Lord? Having or showing a strong or unreasonable desire for revenge. You know how y'all get even with folk? You pass by them and you don't speak to them. You want them to know how they feel about how you feel about them. They do in church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Lord have mercy, Jesus. Sharp tongue. Don't you know? I can tell how you feel about me. What way did you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Ooh. Y'all ain't gonna like me. But y'all know what I done, what I done adopted? Said, Lord, help him. After three times, when I see you, I say, hey, what you mean, hey, praise the Lord? I mean, hey, how you doing? We say, praise the Lord. I say, hey, how you doing? And keep on walking. Then they, then they spread the word. Oh, he, done, he just done left the faith. He don't say praise the Lord no more. Yes, I do. I say it to those that I get a reciprocatory praise the Lord back from. Praise the Lord, Brother Roy. How you doing? Praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That myth. Praise the Lord. <laughs> that ain't no praise. That's an insult. The way you say it is an insult. 
Y'all ain't going to like me. Vindictive. You get even with people the way you look at them and the way you speak to them and the way you avoid them. God ain't going to get that young saint. God going to get you because you're supposed to be the one setting the example. Aged men are supposed to teach younger men. Aged women are supposed to teach younger women. Elder Porter, said, Elder Porter shared a testimony in Sunday school. All y'all should have heard it. May I repeat it, Elder Porter? Bishop Bill drove up from Louisiana, brought his congregation with him. And I thank God for everybody that served, everybody that volunteered. Let's give the Lord a standing ovation for all our volunteers. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Give the Lord a standing ovation. You're giving the Lord a, you're giving the Lord, you're giving it to the Lord, you're giving it to the Lord. You're giving it to the Lord. All right, sit down, sit down, sit down. Bishop Bill drove up from Louisiana. And we had dinner after service. I called Elder Porter. I said, Elder Porter. You the head elder, I would like for you and your wife to sit at my table with me. Before I got to the fellowship hall, Mr. Terry, a non-member, asked the staff, asked anybody that's around here, to get the old sanctuary ready. He worked from 7 in the morning sometime to 8 at night. I was here with him before he went home. He came to church. He said, I just come to praise the Lord. Ask the staff. Mr. Terry spent five, almost $500 out of his own pocket to help feed everybody. I said, Brother Terry, come sit at my table. I was on the way to the fellowship hall. The Holy Ghost said, set Brother Courtney at your table. I said, Brother Courtney, would you come and eat with me? He said, yes. Elder Porter, I mean, Elder Darrell and Brother Terry were sitting in Sister Carolyn's in Elder Porter's seat. Elder Porter walked up there and looked at him and said, seat like this. He changed colors. I could see it. He went from brown to black almost. I'm so thankful for discernment because Sister Porter said, Pastor, we can sit over here. We can sit back here. Then you sit at Sister Porter. And I don't know if she grabbed him by the arm or not, but ooh, he was hot as a firecracker. He went and sat at the back of the fellowship hall. I said, Brother Carlos, come here, come here, come here. Because I'm trying to keep everything in the right spirit. I said, please go explain to Elder Porter what happened. Please go explain to him. Tell him I said, I said the Holy Ghost to me said, Brother Darrell. Mr. Terry here. And brother, brother, brother Courtney went, I mean, Carlos went to explain to me, the other point, I mean, I don't want to hit it. <laughs> I don't want to hit it. He went home and went to sleep. The Holy Ghost told him, showed him what I couldn't tell him. God woke him up at three o'clock in the morning. I said, Porter, your attitude is worse than the prodigal son that never left home. He said, you got mad at your brother because he let Daryl and Mr. Terry take his seat. And you went home and went to bed like this. He said, he got out of his bed and got on the knees and said, Lord, please forgive me. I didn't even know that was in me. All I did was obey the Holy Ghost. But God showed that a portal what was in him that he didn't know was there. And he'd been in holiness for a good long minute. Mm. Ain't no God like our God. Because if Ella Porter had a dad with that resentment in his spirit, I don't care nothing about all of his years of faithfulness and holiness. He would have bust hell wide open. We think God going to make provision, Sister Martin, for our attitudes because of everything that we done done up to this point. No, he ain't. No, he ain't. Ha! Ah, he said, spiritual COVID, honorary, combative, bad attitude, vengeance, C-O-V, having or showing a strong or unreasonable desire for vengeance. Ooh! I, C-O-V-I, 
I stands for not logical or reasonable. Not logical. What do you mean it's not logical? You know your attitude is contrary to the will of God. But this is just how I feel right now. That's emotional. It's not logical. So you operate on your emotion. You make it in a spirit. You make it a decision that can affect you throughout all of eternity based on your emotion, how you feel right now. Do you think Jesus felt like being stoned, being having his beard plucked out with tweezers? You think he felt like having a crown of thorns pressed into his skull or lashed 39 times with a scourging whip? Uh-uh. But he endured it. And we have not resisted to blood striving against sin. But we block God. We tie God's hand in his own house because we sit in here Sunday after Sunday with all of this word in us. Hala, yeah, God, yeah, God, yeah, God. And there's no change. You know what the Holy Ghost told me? I was going to call a fast. Today, tomorrow, and Friday. The Holy Ghost said, no, you don't. I know what you mean. He said, this is not the fast that I've called for. I'm quick to repent. Lord, what you mean this is not the fast that you've called for? Because you have called three-day fast in the, in the past. And he said, your people, as soon as the fast is over, they go back to the same mindset. I could have I cried. He said, when the fast is over, they go right back to the same mindset. I said, Lord, help me. So if you want to go without food, don't call it a fast. Just say you're going on a diet, a three-day diet. Because the fast that the Lord has called for is specifically listed in the book of Isaiah to undo heavy burdens. Mm, gabasha. Somebody said glory. glory. I asked the Lord this. I asked the Lord this. Whoo! I got the eye. Huh? Irrational. Irrational, not logical or reasonable. C O V I D. And I said, Lord, what is D? They are distracted. That's spiritual COVID. Ha. Ah. And I said, what about the 19? 19 is an atomic number. You know what chemical it represents? Potassium. What is potassium? It's a chemical that is required to have good health. Your digestive system needs potassium. That's why they tell you your potassium, what they tell you to eat? Banana. Get your banana. Build up your potassium. You know why the word of God sours on some people's stomach? They got COVID-19. No spiritual potassium. The word goes in and it goes right out through the drought. How does that happen? They got spiritual diarrhea. The system won't hold nothing because they refuse to live by the word of God. I'm not fussing. I'm just telling you what the Holy Ghost told me to tell you today. Because just like that woman came in here, Sister Mary, you went out there and got on the parking lot, God going to give her her miracle. But we got to think, we got to think in terms of the ones that walk in here needing a miracle and they never say a word. I asked God this, I asked God this, I asked God this, I asked God this. Because some of y'all didn't notice. When that woman got up and started running around the sanctuary, everybody in church was up. Even the children. The Lord say, go tell Sister Hazel to run. And as she circled the sanctuary, people going to be healed. I said, what? He said it twice. Go tell Evangelist Hazel. They were sitting right there by where Brother Griffith is sitting. Go tell Sister Hazel to run. And people are going to be healed as she passed by. I had the nerve to ask the Holy Ghost, why Sister Hazel? Go to the book of Proverbs right quick. Mm -mm. Somebody give the Lord a hand. Praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh, Proverbs 24, 23 through 27. 
Proverbs 24, 23 through 7. 27. You got it? Proverbs 24, 23 through 27. These things also belong to the wise. Uh huh. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. Uh huh. He that saith unto the wicked, mm. Thou art righteous, mm. him shall the people curse. Yes. Nations shall abhor him. Yes. But to them that rebuke him shall be delight. To him that rebuke the wicked shall be delight. Read. And a good blessing. And a good blessing. Shall come upon them. Shall come upon them. Wait a minute. Who is the wicked? Those that are disobedient when God says something. Those that are disobedient, that don't mean you're a wicked person. That means you did a wicked deed. Can I talk up in this house? Can I talk? Can I talk? Brother Roy, can I share our conversation? The Holy Ghost spoke to Brother Roy. Sunday morning, Brother Roy, go pray for John Doe. I ain't no preacher. What these people going to think about me? Brother Roy sat there and didn't move. He came about the church and knew the Holy Ghost had come. Because who he didn't pray for? God sent somebody else. Ministry ain't about us. God don't care what folk think about you. As long as you do the right thing to magnify God. Hmm. Read. But to them that rebuke him shall be delight. What I tell you, I said, Roy, you was disobedient. You disobeyed the Holy Ghost. And in disobeying the Holy Ghost, you cheated God, you cheated that person, and you cheated yourself. That's a threefold chord. So what you do, what I do, what I do, Pastor? You tell God, I'm sorry, Lord, I was disobedient. God is a forgiving God. He's quick to repent. He's quick to forgive. But we got to be quick to repent. And not trying to justify ourselves being honorary. Well, ain't nobody else doing it. Whoop the do. Folk, did you not know the people in Zion more concerned with what people think about them than God? Wanna be somebody in the eyes of people. <sighs> Read. Every man shall kiss his lips mm. that giveth a right answer. Yes. Prepare thy work without. Ah, wait a minute. Prepare thy works without. Read. And make it fit for thyself in the field. And make it fit for thyself in the field. And afterwards. And afterwards. Build thine house. Build thine house. I said, Lord, what are you talking about? He said, prepare your work without. I don't get it. He said, look around. Sister Hazel is a grandmother. She got grandchildren. She got things to do throughout the day just like all of us do. But ask me if she is faithful in Monday night prayer. She got the right to call and say, I'm going to pray from home too. But God say, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Corporate praise God said, do you not know, boy, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding both the good and the evil. I said, God, who you talking about? He said, I'm watching what people do and what they don't do. The reason I can use Sister Hazel, because she prepared her work without. What you mean? Way before this day got here, she'd be in this house of prayer on her knees. When I just got off work, so did she. I'm tired. So is, I'm talking about a woman. Y'all ain't going to like me. God said, that's why I told her to run. Because I'm rewarding her for her obedience. And when you're obedient to God, baby, it's going to inconvenience you. God don't care nothing about you being tired. God don't care nothing about how you feel. Excuses, excuses, you'll hear them every day. And the devil, he'll supply them if from this church you stay away. Mm. When people come to know the Lord, the devil always loses. So to keep them folk away from church, he offers them excuses. What kind of excuses? Well, it's up to the mountains or out to the park. When the weather is cold, the whole family just had to stay home. Why? Because little Johnny had a cold and all of us got to blow his nose. What you mean? Oh, we got to go to the football game. My son played. Go to the football game. 
Give honor to whom honor is due. Support your children. But bring your butt to church come prayer time. Because if nobody else should be in prayer, every minister that named the name of a minister, you need, Lord, don't let me say that. You need to have yourself. See how nice I said this, Sister Jackie? You need to have yourself in here on your knees. Because you're supposed to be covering this congregation. Uh-huh. You're supposed to be covering this. No, the pastor going to do it. The devil is a lie. I am going to do it. That's why Moses sent out 12 spies to spy out the land. That's why God chose 12 men to be with Jesus. If the preacher don't make a sacrifice, who is? If the preachers make sacrifices, if the preachers make excuses, guess what the folk going to do? Please read. Ooh, I'm getting some dirty looks up in here. Lord, prepare thy work without. Aha, uh -huh. prepare thy works without. And make you wait, wait, wait. Hallelujah. I like Alabama for one reason. They're self-discipline. You know why they're the number one team in the nation? They get up at 4.30 in the morning and they on the field for 5 o'clock practice until 8.45. Well, I don't feel like it. Who cares what you feel like it? If you want to pray for this team, if you're not on the field at 5 o'clock sharp, you off this team. Saban don't need you. Whoo, it's quiet up in here. If you didn't watch the NBA draft this year, let me tell you about it. 40, not 10, but 40, 40, 40, 40 boys went from college to the NFL, became instant millionaire. 40. Everybody said 40. Mm. Y'all ain't going to stop God by your inconsistency, by your complacency. Ain't nobody going to stop God. Because what you don't do, somebody else will. Don't say I'm fussing. I'm just telling you what the, what the Holy Ghost gave me for this day. Read, read. I'm trying to let y'all get out of here. Prepare thy work without uh -huh. and make it fit for thyself in the yes, field. Yes, And afterwards, build thine house. Mm -mm. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Lord of mercy. Come on, come on, daughter. Daughter, go to Titus chapter 2, verses 1 through 8 and read it expeditiously because I'm trying to get y'all out here as quick as I can. Hmm. Ooh, somebody, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. I'm just trying to make it, y'all. Titus, is there a chapter 2? Yes, sir. Verses 1 through 4. Titus 2, 1 through 4. Uh -huh. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Wait a minute, say what now? But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Yes. That the aged men be sober, mm. grave, temperate, sound. Wait, wait a minute. That those have experience with God be what? Be grave. Be grave. Sober. Sober. Temperate. Temperate. Sound in faith. Sound. Wait a minute. Sound in faith. Sound. Solid. Mm -hmm. Consistent. Persistent. Yes. Not complacent. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Read. In charity. In patience. The aged women likewise, mm. that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, Who? not false accusers, yes. not given to much wine, uh -huh. teachers of good things, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women ah. to be sober, yes. to love their husbands, yes. to love their children, to love their husbands, to love their children. You, you know what? When, when, ooh, read, read, read. To be discreet, uh -huh. chaste, mm. keepers at home, ha. good, obedient to their own husbands, ha. that the word of God be not blasphemed. Wait a minute, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Read. Young men likewise mm. exhort to be sober-minded. Ha. In all things, mm. showing thyself a pattern of good works. In all things, doing what? In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. Wait a minute. In all things, show thyself a pattern of good works. Brothers and sisters, it's one thing to teach your children to lie to other men. And y'all heard this scenario a thousand times. Ding a ding a ding, ding a ding ding, ding a ding. Hello, hello, is Mrs. Harris home? Yes. Uh, may I speak to her, please? Mama, telephone. Who is it? Uh, 
This is Home Depot calling about her overdue account. Tell them I ain't at home. Mama says she ain't at home. <laughs> what are you teaching your children? How to lie. Y'all, open when you open your mouth and make a vow to God and you don't fulfill it because you're distracted by other things, you know what you're teaching your children? How to lie to God. Because they hear you when you say, oh, when the Lord free me from ministry, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do the other. You can allow the devil to distract you with something that's not of God. If God, I was so happy, I was so happy, I was so happy when I talked to Mother McClinty today. She said, Pastor, the sisters been taking on me. They've been taking good care of me. Somebody give the Lord a hand. Praise glory. <laughs> Did not Paul tell Timothy, make full proof of your ministry? Yes, sisters, y'all got it going on. Y'all got a good report because y'all calling and checking on Mother McClinty. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory. I make sure that I'm, I, I say, I'm, I'm so happy. I said, Mother, you made my day. Now, I'm adding, I'm adding my two cents worth to it. She said, yeah, all the scissors and, uh, and teach your heaven too. <laughs> hallelujah. She specifically mentioned you, Tisa, that you was having to take care of her. I didn't ask you if you bought her something to eat because I knew you got it from the church and it was good. Hallelujah. She got it from the church. She took care of mother. When we have had the dinner, she took mother's place. She said she sat right there and ate it too. I didn't ask her if she had brought anything else that she cooked, but she probably wouldn't have ate it. She said, put it on the baby. I'll get it later. <laughs> read, read, read. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good work. Yes. In doctrine, mm. showing uncorruptness, yes. gravity, and ah. sincerity. Who? Sound speech. Sound speech. That cannot be condemned. That cannot be condemned. That he that is of the contrary part. Who? That he that is of the contrary part. May be ashamed. May be ashamed. Having no evil thing to say of you. Having no evil thing to say of you. Read that last verse again. Sound speech mm. that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, mm. having no evil thing to say of you. Go to Philippians 2, 1 through 4, and that's my last scripture. Philippians chapter 2, 1 through 4. I'm getting out on time. Thank you, Jesus. Philippians 2, 1 through 4. Uh -huh. If there be therefore any consolation if in Christ. If there be therefore any consolation. If any comfort of love. If any comfort of love. If any fellowship of the Spirit. If any fellowship of the Spirit. Read. If any bowels and mercies. If any bowels and mercies. Fulfill ye my joy. Fulfill ye my joy. That ye be like-minded. Let ye be like-minded. Yes. Having the same love, huh. being of one accord, yes. of one mind, mm. let nothing be done through strife Wait or minute. vain being glory. Of, being of one mind, say who, say who? Being of one accord, being of one accord, of one mind, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife. Let or, nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind. Hey! But in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Say who? Let each esteem other better than themselves. Say who? Let each esteem other better than themselves. Say who? Let each esteem other better than themselves. Say who? Let each esteem other better than themselves. A few months ago, I recontracted athletic feet. Anybody ever had athletic feet? Lord have mercy. It get right between your toes. Lord have mercy. And my toes got more attention than my head. And you know how you go to bed and you be sleeping and like just between your little toe and the other toe it get the itching and you just want to take a towel and rub it, rub it. <laughs> ah. My wife went and got me the medication and it dried it up. But that little toe got more attention in three days than my head do all week long because it got my attention because it was itching. Let each esteem others better than themselves. Wait a minute. Stop right there because I'm, I'm done. I got one more minute. Let each esteem others better than themselves. Dr. Conway wrote a book called The 80-20 Rule. What do you mean, Dr. Conway? 
He's a pastor porter. 80% of ministry is done by volunteers. Let's give God a hand praise for all the volunteers. Hallelujah. 80% of ministry is done by volunteers. The other 20% is done by paid employees. I don't care whether you sing on the praise team, you serve as an usher, or you teach Sunday school, you're on the deacon board or the trustee board, you are volunteering your time and your talent as unto the Lord. You know what God showed me? You know what God showed me? God is going to give every volunteer their reward. But he also says, give honor to whom honor is due. Volunteers can't pay their bills with thank you, I appreciate it. But God is going to supply all of their need according to his riches and glory. And for you to make light of what you consider a little toe or not important, you mess around and lose a toe. You'll find how important it is to balance. For you to let words come out of your mouth that are distasteful or disrespectful to a volunteer, I got a challenge for you. I got a challenge to all paid employees because the work of the ministry has to go on. You know what my challenge is? For the month of October, the individuals that volunteer, that you have not individually taken the time to thank them for their service, whether they decorated a table, picked up a piece of paper, served a plate of chicken, or, or mopped the floor after everybody else has gone. You had the opportunity to say, thank you, I really appreciate what you've done. The Holy Ghost told me to challenge you, take the month of October, take one of your paychecks, and give it to a volunteer at this ministry. Tell them you appreciate them. Lord is quiet up in here. That's the challenge. If you think they are unimportant, and do you not know we got people that serve that refuse to take a salary? They say, I'm doing this as unto the Lord. I said, Doc, let me, let me give you, no, 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 no. You ain't, you ain't gonna cheat me out of my blessing. I'm doing this as unto the Lord. Y'all don't know what people be going through. They make sacrifices just like you do. The only difference is they don't get paid for it. Before you take an attitude at a person that's volunteering their time, consider that they may be going through hell right then. Don't make light or let the word come out of your mouth, petty issues. It may be petty to you, but it's not petty to them. Because their time is just as important as your time. They got children, they got things to do. Oh God, if Everybody that does everything in the house of God demanded pay, the church would shut down tomorrow. Yes, it would. You're not going to run no volunteers off. Because if you run the volunteers off, I'm going to leave with them. I sure am. I'm going to leave with them. I go on a street corner with volunteers because you know what they're doing? They're doing what they're doing is unto the Lord. And they ain't getting paid for it. And their reward is going to be greater in heaven. Somebody said, this our time. This our time. How, what did the last scripture say? Do I read it one more time? Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Uh -huh. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Because when you find out after the fact, when you find out after the fact, that their son was locked up in Rankin County. They just arrested six officers in Rankin County. When you find out after the fact that their son was locked up in Rankin County and there was another major ailment in the family or a financial crisis, and they're doing what they're doing, they're sacrificing their time. I could be at the jail visiting my son, but I got to come take care of the house of God first. You better bite your tongue before you let words come out of your mouth, out of your emotions. Stand with me all over this place.
God cannot do what he want to do. There was a song back in the day when I first got saved. It says, if you move, if you move, if you move yourself, if you move, if you move, if you move yourself, then God can have his way. If you move, if you move, if you move yourself, if you move, if you move, if you move yourself, then God can have his way. Give the Lord a praise, give the Lord a praise, give the Lord a praise. <laughs> Thus saith the Holy Ghost. Don't let what God is doing ever become complacent. Don't ever get to the point where God worked a miracle for some one person that the whole house of faith does not rejoice. Don't ever get to the place where you come to a service and God tell you to do something and you disobey God because you are more concerned about how you look to people than obeying God. God tells some folk to come to the altar. They hold their seats, Sister Beverly, because they don't want nobody to think they're in sin. God didn't tell you to come to the altar because you're in no sin. God told you to come to the altar because he wants to equip you because on the way back, see, you just go walk by and touch a person on the shoulder and they're going to be healed. Oh, I didn't know that. You ain't supposed to know that. Because the Bible tells you that the way of a man is not found in himself. It's not left with man that walketh to direct his steps, but the steps of a good man. Why do you think God give you the Holy Ghost? To make you good. Can we give the Lord a praise in this house? Glory, glory, glory. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say glory. Somebody bless the name of the Lord. This is our time. God want to heal people of diseases that the doctors can't help. Lord have mercy, Jesus. He want to do it. God want to fill people with the Holy Ghost in the midst of the service. God want to restore families. God want to save folk that don't even know nothing about the plan of salvation. That's why he put you here. Thou art come into the kingdom for such a time as this. Get out of the way. Get out of God's way, get out of God's way, get out of God's way. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this, your precious children, that you love with an everlasting love. We know that you so loved us, that you gave your only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Cause great faith in your word to come alive in this congregation. Cause great faith to come alive and to be actuated in the lives of this congregation that you'll be able to continuously and more abundantly, we know that you're able to do it exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. Don't let us tie your hands in your own house. You said you would send help from the sanctuary. I'm asking you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that you are able, Lord God, to anoint this whole congregation to not only change this, con this neighborhood, but to change this whole city. Lord God, if all would not get on one accord, you, the faithful few, to work great miracles, great signs and great wonders that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be magnified, will be glorified not only in this congregation, not only in this house of prayer, but throughout this city. Even as thou hast caused, Lord God, Sister Thea Faulkner to come today requesting prayer for the miracle that she need. Cause others to talk of your goodness. Mm. Cause others, Lord God, to testify how you have healed them, how you have delivered them from the power of darkness. 
and brought them into the power of light. Anoint us and use us in thy service. We'll be careful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. In just this case, there's somebody under the sound of my voice that has not been baptized in Jesus' name nor filled with the Holy Ghost. There's water in the pool, clean clothing for the changing of your apparel, and sanctified hands that will take you down in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Will there be one? Let's give the Lord a hand praise. <clears throat> very, very important announcement. Jackson Public Schools are consolidating Whitten Middle School and People's Middle School. Please listen. Jackson Public Schools is consolidating Whitten Middle School and People's Middle School. Not only rivals in sports, but they are rivals in the streets. The administrator in the person of Dr. Robinson that is with dogs, D-O-W-G-S, dads of great scholars, dads of great scholars, contacted me today, said, Pastor Porter, we need help. We need men from Monday to Friday of next week to be at People's Middle School from the time that these young people get off the bus until the time they get on the bus to go home. We need men because it's two different schools, rivals in sports, rivals in the street. We need men to be walking the halls. We need men to be there when they get off the bus. Can you help us? And I had to apologize to Deacon Leverett because I took the initiative to call the mayor, to have him to call his boss and the chief of police and to have him call his boss and said, please assign Deacon Andrew Leverett to People's Middle School for all of next week because I'll be there and I'm going to need his help. Everybody has to go to work. Everybody got something to do. I don't care if you take a vacation day, but don't call in and tell a lie. Don't call in to play sick. Amen. Tell the truth. Amen. But we need solid, strong men that understand young people to help us for the first week. They feel after the first week, things will sort of settle down and the teachers can handle it. So I'm asking you if you're able to volunteer either of those days, even if it's just a few hours, your help will be greatly appreciated. Monday, this coming Monday, will be the first day of the consolidation. And y'all know it's in the hood. Some people gonna be there with the TV cameras, WWT 3 and 12, looking for a fight to break out because this in the hood. But this is our hood. Somebody say, man, Amen. this is our hood. And God put us here to make a change in this neighborhood. So I'm asking for volunteers, please. If you can volunteer, please let me know. Next thing, brothers and sisters, the Bible says money answereth all things. I don't know what happened Sunday, but the offering was so low, it didn't even cover all the checks that had to be written. This is your house of prayer. This is your house of prayer. And when it comes to finances, the church can't run without finances. Prayer answers all things, but prayer don't pay bills. Money pays bills. So I'm asking everybody to allow the Lord to speak to you. I don't know what your situation is. God knows. If a dime is your sacrifice and you give that dime, God is going to bless you for it. So I'm going to ask everybody to be liberal in the offering tonight because it was very low on this past Sunday and we need to take a liberal offering up on tonight to cover the shortfall. Also, I'm asking all the trustees to meet me immediately after I dismiss over in the boardroom. If you need a tithing, I'm low, raise your hand. 
Uh, turn up Rance Allen. Turn up Rance Allen. Yeah, there you go. Dick and Spencer, go play y'all some cheerful music. Yes, yes. Raise your hand if you need a tithing. I'm alone. I need volunteers that are male and are of sound mind and body, preferably 19 and over, 19 and over. Please be on time for Sunday school, Sunday morning. We're looking forward to having a wonderful time in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Elder Beverly. Thank you, Jesus. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Call your cable company and cancel your subscription. This new groundbreaking discovery gives you access to your favorite. <laughs> oh, Mason, I, I was just looking at this. My eyes, I can see him good. <laughs> She's so looking at her dad. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Play Rance Allen. Yes. Play some music, Rance. I need your schedule until so you play. I, I want to ask you. I'm going to get some, some passes to the games. I'll be sitting in the same area if you want to go with me. My wife don't like football, so if you want to go, let me know. Okay. Yes, sir. And if that man tries to start something, you're going to work. <laughs> uh.